got a 2007 VTX 1300. Uh, we're going to do two things to this. We're going to change out the neck bearings uh, in the uh, in the bike to uh, all balls. Uh, we're going to do a tapered uh, bearings instead of uh, ball bear, you know uh, ball bearings because ball bearings tend to over time give play in the uh, in the head. It's one of the uh, faults with this bike um, over time basically the balls will wear out uh, in this application they should have used uh, a tapered uh, bearings instead anyhow so we're going to change out that and then also I'm going to work on fixing my leak that I have in my sh front shock here uh, you can see I've got all sorts of mess couldn't figure out why I was getting road grime on one side until I finally realized one day I saw this drip mark and saw some oil on the on the ground. So I'm gonna get started. The first uh, thing we're gonna do is remove the uh, the windshield and my lowers that I have installed on here. Um, remove those. I'm gonna start with removing the the seat uh, so that I can get access to the gas tank. Um, it's very simple. Remove the two bolts that are holding the seat on this one here remove these two bolts once you remove these two bolts this will allow the seat to fold out and out there's only one bolt holding on to the tank uh, it's the bolt in here with the seat off in order to remove the tank you need to undo this bolt you need to undo these two connectors that connect into there this is for the odometer once you've done those two, what you want to do is unconnect the vacuum hose that goes to the petcock valve, turn the petcock valve off, remove the gasoline line that goes to the carb, make sure you've got a towel paper, as you can see you'll get some gasoline, that falls out of here. Um, we're all ready to remove the tank. In order to do so, what we are going to do is, is we're going to lift the back end up and pull the tank backwards and the tank comes off the bike. Uh, one thing to note down below here you've got an overflow pipe right here. Um, once I lift this tank upwards it's full of gasoline right now actually I've got all five gallons in there um, can't do it with one hand. So once I lift this up, I'm going to pull that pipe down so that I can unhook it from the gas tank. And that'll be the last thing that's holding it in place. So let me get that started. With the tank off, the next thing to do is uh, remove the front tire. In order to do so, we're going to go ahead and loosen these two six millimeter pinch bolts. And then we're going to remove the axle bolt. At the same time, we're going to undo these two bolts that hold the front uh, the uh, the front brake caliper on. Um, once you've removed those two bolts, you want to somehow support this so that the caliper is not hanging by the pipe. So I've tied an old shoelace, and I'm going to tie it to my uh, uh, the highway bars. Once I've done that, um, I'm going to come back around to this side. I'm going to loosen these two pinch bolts then I'm going to drop the bike down so that the tire the front tire is touching the uh, is touching the ground so this way there's not much load that is being carried by the axle bolt and then I will pull the front axle bolt out which will allow me to uh, drop the front tire so let me get started on that the process of removing my front tire, I just wanted to note and show to you people that you need to make sure you've got the right spacer on the right side after you remove the tire. I've not removed the caliper yet, but uh, <clears throat> I shouldn't need to. I'll uh, remove the caliper once I've loosened the bolts on this side of the... Uh, uh, once I've removed the fender bolts on this side, uh, because one of the... <clears throat> one of the one of the brackets that holds in the line is 
tied into this bolt right here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, quickly remove the the axle. I'm in the process of pulling it out, as you can see. But you do want to note that the smaller collar or the smaller spacer is on the right hand side, or it, it's on the left hand side of the bike, and this is on the right hand side of the bike. And that is again looking in the front direction, uh, not looking back at the bike. I wanted to show you a video of the front tire coming out. I'm just basically jacking up the car, I mean uh, the bike, and as you can see, it is falling out. I've removed the front tire. I'm going to leave the collars on for now uh, so that I don't lose them. So I've got the right, sorry, right and left collar in place. I have stored the axle. Uh, away from everything it's got molly paste on it so once it gets on clothing it's never going to come off so we'll store it away so it's nice and clean we will be cleaning this before we reinstall it so that's that um, i am now ready to work on <clears throat> removing the shock one thing i've done here is tied up the uh, caliper so that it's not hanging off the of the pipe so the next thing to, for me to do is to remove this right shock right shock sorry and then remove the fender from the two bolts that are being held in by that shock and then remove that shock however before i do this uh the pinch bolts are holding the shock in place the best thing for me to do at this point is to remove this cap plate remove this the spacer that's in here and then the spring along with the washer that's on top of the spring uh, the reason why i want to the reason why i want to do this is because once this thing comes off, then there has to be somehow a way for me to grip the, the shock while I'm trying to undo this bolt. So once again, this bolt is under extreme tension because of the spring. You want to undo this, but be extremely careful that this bolt does not, this cap does not go flying away. You want to make sure you've got enough clearance so that when you do remove it, it doesn't hit the handlebar. So go ahead and remove this near the end. Be very extremely careful. Once you've done that, remove the, the spacer, the shock, the, the coil spring that's inside, and the washer that, 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 that the spacer sits on top of. Once you've done that, put the cap back in halfway. Uh, this will then allow us to remove the shock and not have all the fluid fall all over the place. So let me get this started, and then I'll uh, show you. I've removed this uh, top cap, just to kind of give you an idea what it looks like. You've got about this many threads about a finger with the threads. You just wanna make sure that you've got your hand on top of the ratchet while you're doing this because it's gonna come flying off. So if you've got enough pressure sitting on it, you should be good. This is how much it pops out. This is the spacer. I'm gonna take this and put it down here in the bucket. I'm gonna keep this <clears throat> so that the right side stays on the right and the left stays on the left. I mean, this is, this is yeah, this is the right. Anyways, the next thing to do is, is uh, Inside, you should be able to reach your finger in there and grab. This is the, the washer that I was talking to you about. There, This is the springs. Um, you want to make sure you don't end up dripping oil because it's going to get everywhere. So you pull this out slowly so that you're not pulling oil out everywhere. And then I place it down inside a bucket that I've got um, and that's basically it this is how you remove the uh, the, uh, the the coil spring I'm gonna go ahead and clean my hands up and then basically put this back halfway uh, once I've done that then um, I'm ready to go ahead and remove the fender and do the same thing to the other shock on the other side. Okay, so I just wanna show you how I'm ending up uh, pulling the shock out. So if you can look down here, I am pulling the shock down. However, at the same time, in order for the shock to start pulling out, uh, up here, as you can see on this side, all I ended up doing was lightly, ever so slightly, using a rubber mallet, tapping the top of the uh, 
of the shock cover until it basically started going in and then it was if you can look in between you can see that you can see the shock has broken free of this collar right here so basically it's going to feel resistance in here and then it's going to feel resistance in here uh, at this point so just keep in mind always uh, make sure this pinch bolt is opened put a screwdriver in there and slightly nudge it so that um, it doesn't stay closed uh, now that I've got it out from the top you want to make sure I guess in everybody's case it's probably a little different you just want to make sure that the once you open the pinch bolt this thing just doesn't fall out so now I am going to be gently pulling it down and as you can see the shock is coming just want to make sure that Take your time, you don't want to bust anything. And you want to make sure you hold on to your fender here. You don't end up scratching it up. Not that the fender is loose. The shock is out. So I'm going to go ahead and place this shock into pan here so that the oil does not fall out. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this cap a little bit. It's not fitting in the oil pan so that I don't have any fluid coming out of here. The next step after having removed the shocks, I'm going to now remove the handlebars. I'm going to remove these two brackets, uh, the two brackets on both sides. They're held in by the screws. The same screws hold in the uh, the covers, the shock covers. So once I remove those bottom two, the shock cover should come off. Then I have bolts in here that hold in this bracket. And once I've removed that, then I'm going to go ahead and remove the bolts that hold in my uh, risers. Uh, the one thing that I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to, once we remove the the, um, the handlebar, I'm going to lay it on a piece of towel that I'm going to put over here so that everything is pulled forward. Um, at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and remove the two bolts underneath that hold. When removing the oh, upper headlight, uh, the, the, the upper tree, after you remove the nut, you're going to have to wiggle the plate loose slowly and you will have to keep raising it till it comes out of here. Now in order to remove the lower tree, what we're going to have to do is open these tabs up. There should be three, there's two of them. There, there's one on this side and then one on the opposite side. Once we've, once we've lowered these um, tabs, we need to remove this nut. Uh, I'm just going to use a, uh, uh, a big open end wrench to remove it. Or you could uh, remove it with a tool that you can create at home. The tool that I have made here is basically using uh, a pipe steel pipe. I've got a one and a half inch inside diameter pipe. I've got a, a coupler that goes from one inch, one and a half inch, and then stuck in a socket into the back hole and welded it on. You basically cut the bottom tip to match up with the slots and you're good to go. Um, this is actually fairly loose so once I remove the tabs uh, I should be able to remove the lower tree and it should come through uh, when you are doing this you've just got to make sure you're careful not to let the lower tree fall out 
end up scratching up your headlight bucket and falling onto your feet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up these two tabs and remove the, uh, the this plate nut here. I spoke. Um, that upper nut was just basically the lock nut that makes sure that this does not open up. So um, this is the nut, the steering stem nut that holds the thing, uh, the the lower tree. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this nut. Um, it's going to and that's basically it. Now that it's loose, you want to make sure you grab the lower tree while you're taking this thing off because you do not want it to fall out. Here is my uh, lower tree that's pulled out. Um, these were the bearings that came out from the top. Basically, this pulled out upwards. Then you have the race and then you have the bearings. Um, I just want to show you a closer up a few. You can see that the bearings are actually really good. Um, my race, it's going to focus. I don't know if you can see or not, but my race is spotless as well. Uh, so basically, these bearings had been uh, operating perfectly fine. I did have a high speed wobble. Uh, that must have been due to the tire. Um, that's for the upper. The lower bearings are also perfectly fine. Um, my other VTX 1300, when we pulled these out, basically the bearing fell, the, the, the bearings fell apart. And if you look closer at the race, uh, also is spotless all the way around. So, uh, just wanted to show you what this thing looks like while it's out. Um, it is a poor design anyways, uh, so we're going to go ahead and replace them with the uh, tapered uh, bearings from All Balls, um, the way they should have been for an application like this to ensure that there would be no vibration. So, uh, regardless of the issue being there or not, um, we're going to go ahead and fix this. Uh, just to point out, my other bike that I replaced this in only had 5,000 miles, I believe, um, when I ended up replacing them and literally everything was broken. So well, that's about it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started on removing the, uh, the race from the, uh, from the, from the uh, neck, but also we'll need to remove the race from here and then be able to remove this dust shield. Um, I am going to have to use a Dremel tool to cut through this race because I have no other option. I have no other way of uh, removing this uh, this race. So I've got to be extremely. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean this all out very thoroughly, and then I will take a Dremel disc and then cut at it slowly until I'm able to get it to pop open, and then we'll pull it up the shaft. So the other way that we can remove the uh, the outer uh, race uh, on the lower tree uh, for the lower bearing is to take one of these ch chisels and uh, basically end up hitting in between the dust guard and this on an you know horizontally work your way around to the side and back and forth several times until you're able to start getting the head of the chisel underneath it. Uh, once I did that, um, I basically then ended up uh, going in between the aluminum and the uh, the dust uh, the dust shield and started hitting it uh, all the way around. Kept on working it in this 200 and I guess three quarters of the circle uh, diameter. Uh, once I got that um, big enough so that I could slide the chisel then I started hitting the chisel in from this angle. Again you want to make sure you don't end up hitting the stem at all. Uh, so 
you want to make sure you go on this angle here and then from this angle here keep going until you can see that my stem my race is almost off I've got a small distance left once I did once that was done I ended up uh, having a second set of hands that holds this uh, the neck at this angle in the vertical position and then you start ending up uh, hitting it with the shovel uh, with the chisel keep tapping away keep tapping away on both sides on and off on and off on both sides and before you know it this is going to come off and you will not have to use a dremel tool to uh, to to remove that uh, the outer race from the lower bearing and as you go along near the end you just end up hitting it like this from both sides from this side and this side and the lower race the outer race is off I just made this a little detailed video uh, just for those people who are unsure of how to do it with the chisel uh, the first time when I did my neck bearings on my other bike I ended up cutting it with the Dremel uh, because I wasn't able to do it with the chisel but uh, this time I kind of worked it out and uh, it has seemed to work a lot faster than going and uh, borrowing a Dremel from someone if you don't have one or buying one and then coming to do a two in a job so just take your time uh, and tap away lightly and that bottom race uh, the outer race for the lower bearing will come out to remove the uh, uh, upper uh, race for the lower bearing you have to get the hammer in here like this and then hit your hammer in this fashion one way then spin it around and do it the other way so uh, that's the only way you can remove this because if you were to stick something in from up above it basically comes down this and comes off it does not catch the lip however when removing the upper race what you do is stick a chisel a long chisel from underneath with a flat head uh, and then you can tap it all the way around and the upper race the outer race for the upper bearing will fall out without an issue so keep in mind when working with the hammer claw you do want to make sure you take your time because you do not want to end up scratching anything else and you most likely will not you can see there are some slight lines on there however the new uh, bearing when you do install it will fit into the race here and it will not be touching that so just take your time and uh, and, and and removing it okay so just wanted to show you um, I did try with a bear claw uh, the end uh, the claw end of the uh, hammer and um, I was able to get the bearing tilted but um, took my time to do so and then finally I was able to get it enough so that when I stuck a shovel from the top it actually did catch on to the face of the uh, bearing uh, race right there sorry for the shaking hand um, and uh, I'm able to knock out the bearing as you can see it's almost out I'm just gonna hit it one more time and it should fall out <clears throat> in order to start taking your shock apart you need to remove this uh, lock pin fork lock, uh, it's called a fork center bolt um, it takes a little bit of effort I ended up using an Allen key and I used a crescent wrench to grab it on the other side however you will have to put this in the vice grip in order to do this so it's removed through this opening once you've done that the next thing that you're going to want to do is with this inside of this uh, you're going to remove the dust seal basically you're just going to this is going to be on it you're going to use a flat screwdriver very nicely slowly pry the edges until the dust shield comes off once that's off the next thing that you need to remove 
is the uh, is this pin in here. This is what holds your um, uh, all of these parts inside. It prevents it from coming out. So it prevents this whole assembly from coming out of there. Um, in here, there is a slight groove that this will be inside. All you do is just simply a very small screwdriver, slip it into this indentation or this other indentation and push it forward. You want to make sure that you do not end up scratching your uh, the sliding portion of your uh, shock. So very slightly push on it, it will pop. Once that has popped, uh, in a horizontal fashion, this would have been inside. Just make sure you end up pulling it out. You're gonna have to hit it a few times, but again, you don't want to be driving it all the way in and pulling it out. Just pull it all the way out, grab that uh, the inner portion here, and then hit it a few times, and this whole thing will fall out. Once that is done, uh, basically the oil lock piece, um, this piece here goes on the bottom of this thing right here in this fashion and this is sitting in the bottom of this thing. All you have to do is, is hit it upside down a few times and this will fall through. The next thing after that is going to be to remove, slide this oil seal through the next thing would be to to um, to slide the the backup uh, ring or washer, whatever you want to call this, through, and then this uh, guide bushing. This is the one that will also slide through. Once you've done that, the next thing you are going to do is uh, remove this guide bushing. And basically, for that, you're just going to stick a screwdriver in here in the crack. and you're going to pry it open and then slide it off the bottom. Um, the other thing is this piston here along by turning it upside down by turning this assembly upside down the the piston and the spring will come out. Once that's done then you want to go ahead and inspect all your parts uh, see what is worn or whatever um, I am replacing all the guide bushings, the sliding bushing, I'm replacing the, the oil seal and the dust cap. So uh, use brake, brake fluid to clean out all the different parts. Before I start putting these uh, guide bushings back and bushing and the guide bushings back onto the uh, shocks, I just wanted to show you the old versus the new. The old is on the bottom, the new are on top. As you can see, the bottom bushings don't look that much different um, you can see some of the color has worn off but more or less they're pretty much the same uh, this is the um, right hand side and these are the left this is the side that was leaking um, you can see you know the copper portion apparently has uh, color I mean has worn off um, I would say in general they look good, but obviously there's some signs of wearing. Uh, something that's to be expected, I guess, with time. Let me uh, get these things positioned back onto the shock, and then uh, I'll show you how I get the tube back into the uh, the shock sleeve. When assembling the uh, uh, shock back together, you want to take the piston, slide the spring on top, and then once you've done that, you want to slide it into the um, into the fork tube gently. You want to do it, and then you want to tilt it so that it slowly comes out from the end, like that. Install the oil stop on top. Once you've done that, you want to install one of your progressive springs or your stock springs, whatever, back in to here. With that assembly, you want to turn it upside down so that the spring is being compressed into the uh, in, in the tube which prevents this piston from falling back so that this way you're ready to uh, put the fork slider back over it when you are putting it in you want to make sure you do it gently 
without scratching the inside surface of your uh, fork slider because this is the sliding bushing and in order to create that seal um, you want to make sure uh, you do not end up scratching the surface. Once you've done that go ahead and install your bolt with the new uh, crimp washer. Uh, once you've uh, and then what you do is you tighten it down. The final tightening is going to be done after you've added the oil and assembled the whole shock, installed it top cap. You're going to then put it into the vice grip and then torque that bolt down to uh, the final torque. Um, before we even get to this stage of uh, the final torque or adding the oil, the next step before it is going to be to install the top guide bushing, the washer, and then the seal. This is the, this is, let me get back here and somewhere in the light. This is the uh, Honda seal. Uh, I don't know if you can see the, the depth on one side of the seal is deep and then this indentation is shallow. The shallow indentation goes towards the top of the seal and um, to top of the shock here we go. Uh, I'm not sure if you can put this upside down. Shouldn't make a difference. Um, besides that, um, I'm just going to put it back the way the old one came off. The deep indentation was towards the bottom and the shallow uh, indentation was towards the top. Um, let me get this uh, fork uh, assembled. Uh, but uh, the last item is going to be how to get this thing seated. Uh, let me get the uh, thing tied in first, the bolt tied in from the bottom, and then we'll uh, show you how I end up seating the guide bushing in here. Okay, to, in order to get the, um, to set the, uh, the guide bushing, I ended up putting a screwdriver in on an angle and on the opposite side from the notch and putting it in there and holding it down with one hand so I had a I had my son help me out doing this so while he was pushing down uh, on the uh, bushing on the other side I basically doubled up a towel paper so that I don't end up uh, scratching the surfaces put in the screwdriver like this and then twisted it and held it in place uh, while I used the flat end of a chisel and I basically drove the, I don't know if you can see this or not, I drove that joint right there. Uh, I drove the joint down and uh, you've got to pound it in a little bit. You want to make sure while you're doing this the chisel is not touching this surface so you're not ending up scratching it because your oil seal has to come on top and uh, it's going to form the, the seal so you can't have any scratches so once I got it in part way uh, just enough so that it wasn't popping out I then slid the flat washer over the top and then slowly I started pounding uh, with a wider tip um, chisel, uh, flathead chisel, all the way around. And you keep doing that till you have seated that lower bushing. Uh, periodically, just keep removing your flat washer from the top uh, so that you can see how far the bushing has set. So good luck with this. This is the most important portion uh, of this whole assembly. So uh, take your time. Do not scratch anything up and good luck. I did forget to mention one thing uh, when you are doing putting in the uh, the seal back in you want to make sure you lube the outside of the seal with the fork oil. It makes it going in significantly easier. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, so I'm right now in the process of uh, putting in the second oil seal. Once I'm done I'm going to drop in the lock pin and uh, uh, and then uh, set it down using the head of a screwdriver. 
Um, again, you want to do everything that you're doing here, including pounding the uh, guide bushing in very, very gently. I am going to install the upper race. Actually, I've already started to. Uh, I forgot to show you how I uh, was doing it. Basically, before you install the race, you want to go ahead and make sure you lube up the opening uh, with the grease that you're going to be packing your bearings with. Uh, after that, you want to take one of these tools and you basically place it so that it is perpendicular to the opening, or sorry, parallel to the opening. And uh, then you simply start tapping it in. If you notice that this tool, that the bearing is not, the, the race is not going in, then basically what's happening is is that you've got you're putting it in on an angle so while you're hammering it in uh, just make sure that you are putting the race in uh, so that it is parallel with the opening once this uh, is going to be flattened at this point uh, as you can see there is more distance inside the opening that uh, that requires me to countersink the the race so at that point, what I'm going to do is, is with the help of uh, my old bearing race that I removed, I'll place that over it and then place that tool on top of it and uh, smack it in the rest of the way. So let me get this thing finished and then I'll show you how I did the bottom. Now that the upper race is in, as you can see, the old one also is in. It's not coming out with uh, me pulling it on my finger. So basically I'll stick a screwdriver in from the bottom and uh, make sure I grab that lip and knock it out. While you're doing this 100% of the time you want to make sure that you are not going to scratch the inside of the new race that you just put in. Okay so um, I've lubed the inside of the of the, uh, the chase opening, race opening I mean. Uh, so I've gone ahead and done that. Um, now I'm going to basically uh, drop in my race. Again, the narrow opening goes towards the up. The tapered portion, the wider portion of the race goes down. And I'm going to hold this in place here in this fashion and knock this all the way in. Again, um, this tool is going to stop when it gets to the 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 neck. <clears throat> so at that time what I'm going to do is stick on top of this the old race and then uh, pound it in the rest of the way. And once that's done, um, if the old race is still stuck in there, stick in the screwdriver from the other side and uh, push out the new race, I mean an uh, old race. Okay, so uh, after mounting the races in the, into the, uh, the neck, um, now what I have done is installed the lower bearing uh, and uh, I used one of the old races that are tapered uh, so that it sits on top of the new uh, the new uh, inside race of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the of the new bearing and then used a contraption here basically use a one and a quarter inch by 12 inch long pipe with a uh, coupler on it basically you slide it over neck over the uh, over the uh, the uh, the, uh, the rod here, and then you basically hammer it in all the way around. You keep hammering it all the way around until you know that the bearing has seated. Once that has been accomplished, what we're gonna do next is we need to remove this race. And in order to do so, what we're going to do is we're going to put a hammer up against, uh, sorry, a screwdriver against here. And then on the opposite side to knock this outer race off, the old outer race off. Okay, so that's basically it. Once you've got that done, then we are ready to install the lower tree into the neck. And just like that, this race comes off and our bearing is set. So we are ready to go ahead and install the lower tree.
I've got the uh, lower triple tree installed and the adjustment nut, nut tightened uh, to where it should be. I basically followed the instructions that I found on the VTX OA site that were done by uh, Madness Motorcycle LLC. So uh, right after this uh, portion of the video, I'm going to show you the uh, notes so that you can read them. You'll have to read them several times before it becomes clear what you need to do. Once you've got that done, uh, Now that you've got the adjustment done, you basically install the washer in between with the tabs. Then you install your lock nut on top. You tighten it or snug it down to the point where you do not end up turning the adjuster nut. Uh, push the tabs up. Now we're ready to install the upper, upper uh, top tree. After having installed the upper top tree, uh, and I've uh, made my uh, nut on top uh, as snug by hand as possible. The next thing to do is to is to adjust the height of each shock. Um, I'm not at this process right now because I have to still uh, finish uh, rebuilding my shocks, but the process that you would do at this point would be to open the lower pinch bolt, drop your shock, to the correct height that you want it at and then tighten the upper pinch bolt tighten the lower pinch bolt repeat the same thing for the other side once that's done then you go ahead and tighten the pinch bolts to the specs per the uh, Honda manual and you tighten this bolt down uh, for that manual as well after I've finished uh, doing our bearings uh, I've gone ahead and uh, installed my fork covers I've got my brackets installed. Uh, you want to make sure before you get the four covers on you route this thing, uh, your cables correctly. Otherwise you're going to have to take them off again to, uh, otherwise you're going to have to take the four covers off before uh, you reinstall, before you reroute the cables. Um, the stem nut uh, is supposed to be torqued down to 76 pound feet. Um, I've got one of the shocks installed. Uh, the reason we only have got one done is because we now need to install the fender. But before I move on, I just want to tell you the bottom pinch bolt is supposed to be tightened to uh, 39 pound feet, and the upper pinch bolt is supposed to be installed uh, tightened to 17 pound feet. Um, <clears throat> you bring up the shock as far as you want to on on either side, so. I set mine to a certain height and next thing what I'm going to do is when I install the second one in I'll make sure that I match the same height. So the next thing to do from here is uh, get my fender bolt, the fender installed on one side so that I can bring in the shock from the other side and uh, repeat the same process. Uh, once that is done we will then move okay, on. Okay so I've installing. got the uh, front tire installed. Uh, basically um, before you install the front tire, I went ahead and cleaned out the spacers on both sides. Uh, and then I applied some uh, molly paste to the axle. As you can see, some of that stuff is still coming out. Okay, so now I've got the um, axle pushed through. I've got the axle line mark lined up with the uh, fork. Uh, so now what we do is, is you pinch these uh, pinch bolt, you tighten the pinch bolts down to 16 pounds feet and then after that you want to tighten the axle nut. Uh, once that axle nut is tightened then only do you then torque these down to 16 as well. The axle nut is supposed to be torqued down to um, I believe 43, okay here we go sorry, 43 pound feet.